Hi everyone, welcome back to From Eggs to Legs, a series that invites you to reconnect with the wonders of the natural world. In our last episode, Hunting for Tadpoles, we made an unexpected discovery. We found salamander eggs. In this episode, I will show you how I set up their hatching tank, and we'll also get to see the little guys emerge from their egg sacs. So let's get started. Step one is to set up their hatching tank. I begin by measuring the temperature of the extra pond water that I brought home with the egg sacs. I want to be certain that I don't shock the larva with a drastic temperature difference when I submerge the eggs into the tank. I filled the tank with 50% fresh water and 50% pond water. I am using pond water because it has microorganisms in it that will serve to feed the larva when they hatch. Whenever you are adding tap water to an aquarium, you must neutralize the chlorine that the tap water contains or you can harm the animals. You can find water additives at your local pet store which will immediately neutralize the chlorine and make it safe for your animals. I added an air stone to provide proper aeration to the water. Now that I have the water properly treated and the tank filled, the next step is to add the egg sacs. I want to be gentle while doing this so I do not disturb the larva too much. The egg sacs are comprised of individual eggs that are encased in a jelly-like substance. If you look closely, you will notice them wiggle from time to time. It is so amazing and I think these guys are just about ready to hatch. Here is an individual egg that I believe was not fertilized properly. Notice the white substance inside. I will keep it in the tank to see what, if anything, happens to it. I've also added some snails, hoping they will help to consume some of the extra food and animal waste. I really enjoy watching the snails clean the tank and the eggs. In fact, I became so captivated by them, I didn't even notice one of the larvae had hatched. It was a very exciting moment. The next morning when I woke up to check on them, I was shocked to see a lot had hatched. I estimated about 40. I believe these are Eastern newts, which are common in my area. Unfortunately, I'm not able to use a traditional aquarium filter in this setup. The water current that a filter would produce would be too overwhelming for the larva. So I will have to perform water changes daily and use a suction device to remove debris from the bottom of the tank. I definitely have my work cut out for me. I've learned newt larvae will only consume live food. In the pond water that I brought home, there are plenty of microorganisms for them to consume. But at some point, the water from the pond will be totally displaced by the fresh water that I'm adding for my daily water changes. Then there will no longer be a source of food for them. This led me to begin a brine shrimp hatchery. Brine shrimp will be small enough to fit into the larva's mouth and will be the perfect food source, at least for the time being. You hatch the brine shrimp in a heavy saltwater brine mixture, so I like to rinse the shrimp off first with fresh water before I introduce them into the tank. Feeding time is my favorite time. 
I love to watch them hop when they eat and it reminds me of corn kernels popping. It has been a few weeks now and all of the eggs have hatched and I estimate I have about 105 newts. They all appear healthy and are growing very quickly. Some even have all four legs. In my research, I have learned that in the wild, only one to 2% of the larva would survive into adulthood. I'm going to do my very best to keep as many of these little guys alive as I can and I hope to release every last one of them back to the pond from where they came. So please make sure to check out the next episode of From Eggs to Legs, where you can join me in watching the amazing metamorphosis of these little creatures. We will watch them turn into Fs and make their way onto land. So be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the journey. Thanks for watching.